Scratch my back and I scratch yours like I'm supposed to. When we first met, I told my friends, yeah, I knocked the loco. Up top, pretty thing. Seattle, what a pretty name. She hit me with that city game. Looks fresher than the Northwest rain. Right now, we are in my great aunt's home which is to say this is the home of my grandfather's sister. It's also the home that my grandparents owned together. My grandparents' generation was a part of the Great Migration, that era when African Americans were leaving the South and coming to northern cities and western states um, in mass looking for a better opportunity and a better life um, and to escape the, the, you know, the, the violent oppression of the American South. I mean, the Central District was the only place in the city where black folks could buy property. Because of that, that's where the black community was and that was where all of our, you know, religious, social institutions, everything was centered here. We grew up together. I found solace in your back blocks, alleyways and rap spots, bass heavy off of Al Qaeda with your skyline in the backdrop. Yeah, that's what we posed in front of. Now, supposedly, you pose and you. I think there's ways that black people naturally organize that is embodied. Like, when I think about this house, I'm from Seattle, but my family's not. My grandfather moved from South Carolina to Chicago and bought a whole bunch of houses that family could live in and rent from, just like Inye's grandfather, right? And it was like this upwardly mobile 20th century thing that Black folks did, right? So it just feels like it's part of our DNA for us to rent the house and then make sure our family of Seattle can come in and have a space here. I mean, the neighborhood has been changing for the past almost 30 years. Definitely the past decade, things have accelerated the gentrification of the neighborhood. The neighborhood's gone from being almost 80% black to less than 10% black. Um, so that's a massive change in, in every aspect of our daily lives. The folks who um, lived in the Central District, you know, um, throughout the the 20th century, the community that, that we grew up in, that we were familiar with, that we helped to create, essentially doesn't exist, at least not in a concentrated geographic way. We've been talking a lot about belonging and that everybody wants a place to belong, right? And so people knew that this was their neighborhood, they knew they belonged here, and that has been taken from them. When neighbors look at them and say, what are you doing here? The biggest thing that folks are, you know, attempting to sort of pinpoint are, you know, how do we actually survive this? How do, one, how do we survive it? And then how do we, you know, come out on the other end in some way that feels whole? As a Black artist in Seattle, it gets really lonely in terms of, like, trying to figure out where you can share ideas with other people that are like you and actually, like, push you and see exciting work. I'm really interested in it being a place where people can experiment with new materials and new ideas. And that's why it's really important to have the local, regional, and national artists conversation within the house, right? So when local artists are exhibited in the same space as national artists, they don't have to leave their city to be able to feel like they get to that level of their career. We need um, imaginative responses, ways of imagining ourselves in the future right, that have everything to do with us getting there on our own, you know, in ways that make sense to us. At times like these, see me for who my neighborhood elders made me. See me for the fire that I am, for the match, the kindling, and the blaze, but also see me for my ash in these trying times. The current state of affairs in our current political climate, in times like these, we have to remember, we will get through this. We always have. Yeah. Thank you. So much for being there. Uh, Alfred Eagles, please make some noise. I am excited about the ideas of Black artists and how they permeate the world. I've been going to galleries since I was 
18 years old and half the people don't look up at you and treat you like you shouldn't be there. And so I intentionally wanted to flip that experience and make people feel welcome because like I said, I think artists are the philosophers of our time. And so for us to kind of think about these big ideas that we're all trying to solve in the world, artists are the ones that are gonna be tackling those ideas in the ways that like reach us in our heart space. What does it mean to bring people in? What does it mean to use the art as a gathering space? And so I think the house deconstructs that completely. You feel welcome, you feel like it's your grandmother's house, which is what most people say when they come through the door. Wanawari is about making sure the culture of black folks that was part of this neighborhood is not erased. Because people come back and then they feel like they're strangers in the neighborhood they grew up in, right? So how do you retain culture? And I think that you do that through art. You do that through dance and music and spoken word and visual art and new media. And then people know they belong here. Dear.